hello, wherever you are and however you're watching, a very warm welcome um, to this Remembrance Sunday service. It's good to have you joining with us in worship this morning. Before we begin, uh, let's say a prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you for this opportunity to gather together to worship you. And as we gather, we especially thank you for those whom we remember this day. Those who have given of their lives, of their time, of their talents in the service of others that they might live. Father, as we remember them, help us to follow their good examples. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And so now to our uh, first hymn, a uh, old time uh, favourite uh, that speaks very much of um, worshipping our God, immortal, invisible, God only wise. to a time of confession. Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. And so we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer with the collect for the day. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, 
govern the hearts and minds of those in authority, and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come now to our readings. Um, the first reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians is read by Mari Bennett, uh, an NHS worker, um, in our local medical practice. It's wonderful to have Marie uh, reading for us today. And the second reading from Matthew's Gospel is read by the chairman of our par parish council, uh, Peter Wales. Thank you both um, for being willing to do these readings. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with those them that have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore encourage one another with these words. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel is written in the 25th chapter of the Gospel according to St Matthew, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello and a very warm welcome to this Remembrance Day sermon. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, be in my speaking and in our listening that together we would know you more clearly, love you more dearly and follow you more nearly. In Christ's name. Amen. I have preached and led many Remembrance Sunday services, but this year it seems to be particularly poignant. Perhaps that's because of the unprecedented times in which we find ourselves. A world that wherever we seem to look, appears to be in a state of turmoil and change. A world struggling with the pandemic in which, like those who serve in our armed forces, we find our mortality brought more to the fore of our thoughts. A world in which our lives and the lives of those we love seem to be more fragile and uncertain than before. Into such uncertain times, both of our Bible readings speak words of hope and encouragement. 
Both are concerned with the end of days, Jesus' second coming, when Christians believe that Jesus will return to his creation to make a new heaven and a new earth. The uncertain and somewhat frightened times in which we live may well feel to some like the end of days, but Jesus makes it clear in the chapter in Matthew's Gospel preceding the one from which today's reading is taken, that about that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. If Jesus himself does not know when the end of the world is to be, then it's hardly surprising that we don't. And hence, we should be on our guard against those who try to tell us that now is that time. However, Jesus did teach us two most definite and important things about his second coming. The first was a promise that he will come to bring in a new heaven and a new earth, or as he says in today's gospel passage, keep awake therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Or again, as Paul writes in this morning's passage from his first letter uh, to the Thessalonians, for the Lord himself with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. We may not know when Christ will come and the events surrounding that coming are mysterious and strange to understand. But we have been warned, come, he will. And when he comes, Jesus repeatedly cautions us to be ready, to be prepared, or as one t-shirt I recently saw stated, Jesus is coming, look busy. Unfortunately, as the parable of the 10 bridesmaids shows us, simply looking busy won't do. Weddings in the Middle East can still be like those described in this morning's gospel reading where the bridegroom goes on a procession uh, around the village in which several events might be held. As a result, he's often delayed and can end up at the bride's house late at night for the actual wedding banquet itself. In the parable that Jesus told, five of the bridesmaids were prepared for such a delay. They had enough oil. The other five were not prepared and in going to purchase some more were locked out of the wedding feast. Their unpreparedness had cost them dear. This parable had immediate significance for the Jews of Jesus' day. They were the chosen people. Their whole history should have been a preparation for the coming of the Son of God. They ought to have been prepared for him when he came. But instead, they were quite unprepared. And so they lost their unique place. They no longer had any sole guarantee to a place in the kingdom of heaven. This parable also has significance for us. It warns us that there are certain things which cannot be obtained at the last minute. It's too late for a student to be preparing when the day of examination has arrived. And it's too late for someone to learn a new skill when a task requiring it is at hand. Likewise, Jesus is warning us that it's all too easy to leave things so late that we can no longer prepare ourselves 
to meet with God. Yes, a dying thief on a cross may repent and still be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. Thank God. But do we really want to risk such an important thing to the last minute? This parable also warns us that there are certain things which cannot be borrowed. The foolish bridesmaids found it impossible to borrow oil when they discovered that they needed it. It appears unchristian of the wives, uh, bridesmaids not to give them any, but Jesus is using this to make the point that a relationship with God can't be borrowed. We cannot be living on the spiritual capital which others have amassed. We must win it for ourselves. How? How do we prepare ourselves for the Christ who will come at some unexpected hour? Well, one way is to give of ourselves in the love and service of others, just as Jesus gave himself in the love and service of all. On this Remembrance Sunday, we remember, above all, people who were willing to give of themselves, even if that cost them their very life, in the service of others. And I suspect that this year, with the coronavirus very much in our minds, that example doesn't just apply to the personnel of our armed services, past and present but also to the example of our NHS workers and other key workers who have risked their lives that others might live. As we remember their brave example today, I encourage each one of us to think about how we might better give of ourselves so that others might live, and especially in the unknown days that lie ahead. One of the last instructions that Jesus gave to his first disciples was this. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. To give of ourselves in the service of others is what the men and women of our armed services do day in and day out. It's what our NHS workers and other key workers have been doing and will continue to do in the days and weeks ahead. And it's part of what Jesus asks us to do as we prepare to meet him when he comes again. It's not just in the big things, but also in the little day-to-day -day things, the small actions we can take each and every day that such giving of ourselves can be found, as this final story of mine hopefully illustrates. As a man walked along a beach, he noticed a young woman ahead of him, picking up starfish and flinging them into the sea. Finally catching up with the young woman, he asked her why she was doing this. The answer was, that the stranded starfish would die if, if left until the morning. But the beach goes on for miles and there are thousands of starfish, countered the man. How can you make any difference? The young woman looked at the starfish in her hand and threw it safely into the waves. It will make a difference to this one, she said. Each day, some small action of ours can make a big difference to someone, even in the face of a whole world full of great need and suffering. On this Remembrance Sunday, as we remember and give thanks for those who were willing to give of themselves that others might live, remember too that we are also called to act for what is right and just and loving in the small things 
and the big things, that we might better be prepared to meet Christ when he comes in glory to be our judge. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day of remembering, of remembering all who gave and give of their lives in the service of others, in the service of their country, in the service of what is good and true and loving and caring, in the service of what reflects something of your kingdom of truth and justice and peace and life. Father, as we remember them, help us to be willing to follow their examples, to give of ourselves as Christ gave for all. In his name we pray. Amen.
On this Remembrance Sunday, when circumstances have compelled us to break with over a hundred years of tradition, we thank God that we are yet enabled to join together to remember all who have gone before us in service to our nation and all who still suffer in mind or body as a consequence of such service. We pray as well for those families and friends who love in death just as they did in life. And we ask God to comfort those who mourn as God sustains they who tend and care for the sick and damaged. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. let us pray for the men and women serving in our armed forces. Pray for their protection from harm. And let us pray as well for the families, often separated from their loved ones, as they endure the hardships of service life and the agonies of uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Amen. And we pray for so many around the world who still suffer as a result of terror, anger, violence, and man's inhumanity to man. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we pray for peacemakers and peacekeepers throughout the world, for diplomats and statesmen as they work to bring solutions that will end conflicts, and let us pray for those who preach the message of the Prince of Peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our On this day we pray for the work of the Royal British Legion and the other service charities, that through the generosity of many, those who have suffered much for the country shall be sustained in health, hope and companionship. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And we lift up to God all who at this time are unwell, thinking today of those from this community who have asked that we pray with them. Derek, Pauline, Kay, Graham, Bob, Clive, Jennifer, Christopher, Jenny and Pat. Then let us pray for all who were afflicted by the pandemic. And as we pray for them, let us commend to God the men and women of the NHS in their work to cure the sick and to bring comfort to their relatives and friends. Lord, in your mercy. And let us pray for Her Majesty the Queen, for her government and for all who bear the burden of hardship in politics in the military and in religion, that God grant them wisdom and resolve in the eternal quest for reconciliation and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, let us pray for ourselves, that we live our lives worthy of those who surrendered theirs for us, following the example of God's Son, Jesus. For most surely, God is the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tony, for those prayers. We now gather those prayers together with our own in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we come to the act of remembering. So let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of mankind. Killed in World War One, 1914, Harry Waterman and Nip 
Pope, 1915, Ernest Field, Herbert Large, Robert Groom, Richard Tillyer, Philip Large, Thomas Moore, Charles Tucker, William James, Fred Jerim, Harold Large, Charles Christopher, Alan Hinders, William Wells, John Hill, John Harris, Walter Reynard, James Miller, Thomas Dove, and Sid Stokes. In 1916, Alfred Hayter, Bill Harrison, George Clark, Harold Hinders, Albert King, Harold Burton, Christian Patterson, John Legg, Alex McIntosh, Davis Kitcher, Sansom Holman, Joseph Rickman, and Reg Bue. In 1917, William Cleveland, Fred Burton, Frederick Burton, Lionel Salmon, George White, Thomas Lucas, Albert Murch, William Povey, William Waterman, Sidney Payne, Bertram Payne, John Gates, Herbert Pope, Fred Raisy, Joe Wells, Edward Moores, Bill Dunford, Charles Baker, Dan Broomfield. And in 1918, John Hibbs, Edmund Fisher, William White, Jesse Draguna, Frederick Johnson, Harry Hunt, Victor Bowden Smith, Frederick Sibley, George Christopher, Moses House, Arthur Cole, Albert Kitcher, William Stride, Leonard House, Edwin Pullen, Sid White, Alf Beard, James Elford, Walter Middleton, Bill Philpott, and James Hewlett. And between 1919 and 1927, John Lancaster, William Harrison, David Humphreys, Salem Chandler, Len Smith, and Herbert Smith. Those killed in World War II. 1939, Ronald Chalk. 1940, William Dickinson. 1941, Fred Holden, Jack Dunkinson, Roger Adeen, Peter Bannister, John Short, Patrick Painter, George Ferguson, Anthony Moore. In 1942, Donald Coburn, John Hotham, Drummond St. Clair Ford, Edward Smith, Bill Judd. In 1943, Ronald Reed, Jeffrey Creamer, Bill Close, Ken Smith, Reg Meaden, Anthony O'Donnell, Francis Hodder, Roger Ash, Eric Donaldson, Walter Clark, Cecil Hill. In 1944, James Bannister, Anthony Eastwell, Alfred Shillito, Leslie Dukes, Leslie Miles, Sidney Froud. In 1945, Ronald Mutter. In Northern Ireland, 1973, Nigel Sutton. And following villagers of Brockenhurst were also killed in the war. Lily, Ruth, and Marion Ray, Phyllis, Molly, and Beryl Street, Jean Gentle, and Geoffrey and William Company. They shall grow not old.
as we that are left grow old, age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Now the reef laying is started by the county and parish council, so chairman of the parish council. followed by the Royal British Legion. Followed 
by the uniformed public services, the police and the fire brigade. Followed by the cadet forces. Followed by members of the public, friends of Brockenhurst. The Women's Institute. The Frockenhurst Business Association. residential homes. And the primary school. funeral director. Thank <laughs> you.
And now we come to our act of commitment. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. And so we pray together. Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. And now to the final blessing. God, grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth and all people, unity, peace and concord. And to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all whom you love now and always. Amen. And now just um, a few notices. As you are probably aware, we have now entered um, a new period of lockdown, which means there will be no um, live Sunday worship in church, no public acts of worship. St Nicholas's uh, church remains open for private prayer, so please do go up and avail yourself of that uh, place of uh, peace and quiet uh, and prayerfulness. Um, we will be uh, uh, recording services uh, for Sundays, um, which will continue to uh, go out both live stream um, at uh, nine o'clock on Sunday mornings and also recorded so that they can be watched at any time. So please keep looking at our website um, to keep up to date with uh, what we're actually doing. A huge thank you to everyone who has helped to make uh, these beautiful copies and particular Pauline Chatterway who made a, about a thousand of them, uh, uh, I think. Well done, Pauline. And um, thank you to those who helped plant all these poppies on um, a very uh, miserable, rainy uh, day. It's wonderful to see the sunshine today. So now let's bless one another with the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.